am pretty sure if you grow one single strawberry or tomato, it will be the best strawberry or tomato you have ever had in your entire life. Of course, chances are that right as it's about to be ripe enough to eat, a sneaky little minx of a squirrel is going to swallow it whole while staring into your eyes through the window. But if you are lucky enough to taste it, it will be the best thing you have ever eaten. Ask me about the peanut I grew one time when I was in grade school. It is a tragedy. Now, it is 2024. I know we can't all grow every piece of food we consume, but it's more important than ever that we try to know where our food is coming from. I don't mean you need to know the middle name of your Uber Eats delivery driver, but hey, you know what? That's nice too. But I do have some serious choice words for the dire situation of our food ecosystem. When we pay such little attention to how food is planted, cultivated, grown, harvested, delivered, and prepared, we inflict upon the world extreme labor issues, health issues, environmental issues, technology issues, financial issues, you name it, all in the name of what, like a, a slightly cheaper hamburger? I don't know, man. Here's the thing. Food is fuel, but it doesn't need to come with the same hazardous conditions of actual literal fuel. Really do believe that we can grow food in a more responsible way, a way that preserves more of our water resources, puts fewer pollutants into the air, employs fairer labor standards, all while being nutritious and delicious. But like all common goods, it will take all of us buying in and demanding positive change. So yeah, it's not going to happen by lunch, but we could go in a direction. I'm hopeful. This is Choice Words. I'm Samantha B. My guest today is the incredible actor and author Nick Offerman. You know Nick from shows like Parks and Rec and The Last of Us, and his new movie, Civil War, is out April 12th. We talk about how important it is that we care more about where our food comes from and how we should be more responsible stewards of the earth. I love Nick. I could listen to that silky voice all day long. So take a listen and make good choices. Hello, hello there. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm so excited oh. to to see you and talk with you. I've considered you a, a heroic <clears throat> personage what? for many years now. Oh boy, the feeling is very mutual. And um, you know what is funny because I've enjoyed watching you as an actor. So many projects. I mean, Parks and Rec. The Last of Us, like all the things you do, Civil War is coming, oh my goodness. Um, but actually, even more so than the acting work, I just enjoy hearing you talk. <laughs> is that okay for me to say? <laughs> yeah, it's it's something that um, I, I come by honest. I, I Starting as a teenager uh, in mm -hmm. church, in, in Catholic church, they had me start doing the readings of the gospel <laughs> before. They before, did, yeah. But I was I was kind of uh, a a captain of the altar boys, mm -hmm. and and somehow my penchant for for performing or or delighting the masses uh, uh, manifested itself, and people would say, "Oh, you, we like the way it sounds when you when you read from Philippians." Um, <laughs> Is that the impetus for all of this? Is that where it all began? Your love of performance. I mean, isn't that's? The, I think that's the first stage for many. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's an honor to read the gospel. That's that's a real. That's a feather in your cap. Uh, it, it was, but it was also where I first quickly learned my love of deadpan. Um, this this mm -hmm. would have been the mid eighties. Uh, mm -hmm. Leslie Nielsen and the Naked Gun movies uh, right. were ruling my world. And mm -hmm. so I discovered that by being just a little too serious, I could make my friends laugh while everybody else was moved by my, my rendition. So you'd have little old ladies just like patting, patting away tears 
and your friends were just doubled over laughing. <laughs> yeah. As you read from. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we have, oh, I think, a, quite a bit in common in terms of our taste in things. We have so much to talk about. And at the end of this, I need to, there's, anyway, I'm just going to, I'm going to dive right in because there's too much to get to for me to waste time. Please. Meandering. Um, as you probably know, I, I do start every conversation by talking about the concept of choice, making choices. And I will ask you about big ones that you've made, but it, the idea or like the concept of choice means something really different to everyone. Are you, how do you, how does it sit in your body when you have a really big decision to make? Or does it feel good? Is that where you thrive? That's a it's a great question, and and I love the, I love this uh, this framework for a conversation. Um, it usually for me comes down to every choice kind of comes down to selfishness versus selflessness, mm. and and quite often because I've been married, I've been with Megan for twenty four years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's either my family or my closest friends, or or most often my household, like. Should okay. I uh, say yes to this big job that's going to take me away from home for three months versus uh, the the cost to my household, to right. to my marriage? Um, and so uh, since we're both working professional entertainers and, and mountebanks for, for a long time, those are the big choices in our lives. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so they usually make me feel... Sometimes, uh, like this morning, I became aware of a big choice I have to make, and mm -hmm. it initially makes me feel uneasy because the 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 the, uh, the 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 passions begin to swirl around within me, and the selfish, the baby passions that want their milk and their yeah. <laughs> their pacifier are saying, "Buddy, someone's offering you milk." <laughs> And, right. um, and, and, but, but, but then, you know, real life responsibilities rear themselves and say, Hey, you, you're pretty good on milk. Uh, you don't want for milk. Right. Um, right. and, and so, so initially, uh, when it's a big decision, I have a feeling of unease and usually mm -hmm. because I have good parents, uh, usually the responsible choice wins. The responsible choice. So what are the criteria that you, when you, when a job comes through for you or a job is offered to you, let's say, what are the, so the criteria you use are like, does it take me away from home for too long? Like, is the financial benefit, like, what does that do? Well, the, versus uh, sort of, the, it, it's a little easier maybe to talk about the things that are, uh, that, that cause it to be a no. Mm -hmm. um, okay. When Megan and I first got together and sort of became serious, uh, she had just uh, she had just won her first mm -hmm. Emmy for Will and Grace in the year two thousand, and she was a, a fancy yeah. goddess of Broadway, and and I was literally living in a dirt basement in Silver Lake <laughs> in Los Angeles with a dirt floor for yeah an actual dirt floor <laughs> yeah the part, the deal was that I would like render the space livable okay. in exchange for living in it okay uh, for my friends um, and so I had a lot of class shock. Uh, and a lot of really hard um, hurdles to get over in sort of allowing myself a, a, an aspiring actor who was a full-time carpenter mm -hmm. uh, to sort of like live with an Emmy-winning goddess uh, right. of comedy and 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 uh, and beauty, and um, and so suddenly I got my first TV pilot. A very funny show for Fox called Secret Service, mm -hmm. and I'm uh, a, a pretty medium-sized person, but I was a football player, and like I could, I think I could pass as a small Secret Service agent. The rest, the okay. rest of the cast of this show looked like a, a group of models of like uh, of young right. gazelles uh, put together. Big oak trees, yeah, oak trees, just ants, but. 
gorgeous. We hoped that the that the Secret Service would never see the show because it it <laughs> would have been uh, insulting to them. But so I, I suddenly it was it was uh, huge. I suddenly got a pilot, and it was going to shoot in Toronto. And Megan okay. said, "Hey, man, what if this show goes? Are you going to go live in Toronto for six months?" And so that uh, suddenly I was faced with this crazy choice, and I was pretty sure the show wouldn't go. It it didn't have all of the <laughs> all, all of the requirements that that would make you think this has a chance. Uh, Right. With all due respect to those involved. Uh, but from that, Megan and I made uh, our two-week rule. So we have this two-week rule in our marriage. And this is coming back around to answer your question is mm-hmm. w- when we get offered any sort of job, we decided together to make our marriage our first priority uh, right. rather than our career. And, and so we never shrug at each other and say, Come on, honey. It's it's Frodo Baggins. Like, <laughs> how can I say no to three right. years in New Zealand? Right. Um, and so, you know, uh, so those are the kind of things where the first and foremost, uh, I say, how does this reconcile with with Megan and my household? And then and then uh, you sort of you touched on. I heard the word financial come out of you. There, mm-hmm. uh, I also just. Uh, passed on an opportunity that would have been, um, that I, 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 I thought I was, I was leaning into for about a month. It was, a it was to endorse a product Okay. and, and it was lucrative. And I thought, mm-hmm. well, the, uh, lucre, the root word of lucrative is lucre. Yeah. And, and that mm-hmm. is filthy money with which I like to line <laughs> right. my bed and my nest. And, um, <laughs> and eventually I, I had a couple either late at night going to bed or first thing in the morning when something's not right in my world, I'll wake up and it's the first thing I think of where this, this product was like, Hey man, are you really going to like tell the world that you should consume this product that you don't, that you don't use? That you don't use? Like you really want to tell the world to invest in crypto? (laughs) Like, are you... Yeah. Really? Are you like are you a big crypto? And so and so I and so I passed on it. I called my agent and said, "You know what? Yeah. If I took this opportunity, it would be simply for the greed of of taking right. the the ec- extra money. And I'm lucky enough to make a good living without right. needing to do that." And so so those are the things. I I you know, uh, I'm 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 as flawed uh and and sinful as as your average person. But I do try to, like, check in with my values when facing big decisions. I think that is so needed by more people, (laughs) actually. Like, I often find that doing something, like, when there's, when the only quest, when you have sort of enough, when when you know that you have enough, and if, like, questing for more than enough is sits in my body is so weird that it never works. It is not, it just is, brings such negativity like into my body. And it's so funny that you say that. It's just like the, when you wake up in the morning, if the first thing you think about and you get a little pit in the bottom of your stomach, because you're like, I know this this is wrong for me. (laughs) Then you have to say no to it. I'm, I am grateful for, for those signals. And I mean, like like I said, I'm Megan and I don't live in a hut. Uh, right. We 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 live a a, a luxurious life, uh, but mm-hmm. but where we all draw that line, it is fascinating. It's it's the kind of thing that begs the question. Like we do give of our time and our earnings to causes that we support. So so it's a it's finding a balance between those things right. but i'm gr- i'm grateful for that internal alarm system right. that says no 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 this this way go the billionaires this is not the path for you right right i was trying to explain to my kids the other day and this is so i don't know maybe this is bad for me to say but i'm like hardly anybody makes a billion dollars and did so ethically like in the i was saying to them, no one should be a billionaire on this earth. There should not be any of them. (laughs) There shouldn't be any. And 
I can only think of maybe Taylor Swift got there without exploiting people, but she might be the only one. There, I mean, yeah, there. It's 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 one of those things. I and this is where my my very good parents come into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, my whole family in the small town of Manuka, Illinois, there are about forty family members within an eight mile radius, mm-hmm. um, and Megan and I are the only ones that don't live there. Uh, the whole family are farmers, teachers, nurses, paramedics, librarians. Mm-hmm. They lead lives of service, and my brother right. serves craft beer t- uh, to the public. So he's the he's the king of the town, um, and my dad is legitimately the mayor of the town. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole, but the whole f- aunts and uncles, the, the whole family are the school board, the Lions Club. They right. are exemplary. And to be the jackass who like danced my way off to Hollywood <laughs> and, and I'm, you know, part of what I do is like engage in storytelling that I seek out that feels medicinal in some way. Right. Sometimes it, it's overt where it's like an Ava DuVernay movie or, you know, something that just has a, a, a clear, open-minded, progressive message. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's the stupidest possible comedy that's just going to make people laugh. And that, as we know, is also great medicine in its own right. But all of these things to, uh, to then hold my head up around my family. Right. This another, those are, it's another factor that comes into my decision-making. Right. Um, but, but, but to, to, to wit uh, with what you said about billionaires is for me, I've been so incredibly fortunate, but I, I do have the, I, I do have the ability to recognize that I want my income to come from the visible pr- pr- productivity, right? Like I, uh, I want to earn my money. I don't want to participate necessarily in the in the fictional world of uh, uh, of, of the the global economy that mm-hmm. uh, is sort of this this global fiction. I right. like to perform a duty. I like to create a work of art or build you a table and receive income from that. Um, That's my preference. Want to listen to the rest of this episode? Head over to your favorite podcast player to hear the entire show. I highly recommend it.